Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We are here in Japan, deep within Tokyo, for a special reason, and it's this pint-sized vehicle next to me. What the heck is it? It's a 2024 Nissan Sakura. But before we get into this small micro car, let's talk about what's going on here. Nissan is moving forward with electrification. We brought you the new Aria and all of its style and tech, but guess what? Nissan is no stranger to electrification because it all started with the Leaf, that small hatchback. Now what's fascinating is of course here in Japan, there's a lot of different vehicles that are offered that we can't get in the United States. One of them is this little guy right here. It's not a matchbox car, it's not a Hot Wheels, it's a micro car. So what I wanna find out is, should this car come to the United States and is it a better electric option over the Leaf? Let's go ahead, let's dive into our Sakura and find out. Right off the bat, the dimensions. Remember, I'm six feet tall and this thing is tiny, but wait until we get to the interior. Now, up front, you're gonna get full LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, and I like the way they did the headlight housing, slim and trim. You got that V-Motion style design with your daytime running lamp. You even have LED fog lamps with a little bit of gloss black surround. We come around, to the front, and what do you have? Like I said, that V-Motion style grill setup, you have your Nissan badge. I like the way that they did these horizontal design lines in there, fully illuminated, working our way down. We have functionality, because we need to bring air for the lithium cool battery, and we have, of course, a Japanese front-mounted plate, and the metallic gray on the lower portion. Now, as we rise up, you got this little tiny hood area, no frunk, to speak of underneath. One single motor gives you about 132 mile range. It's not about going for a tour of Japan. It's about getting you around on the city streets. Now, as we come around the bend, check out the size of these wheels. 15 inches in diameter, dark gunmetal gray with the machined aluminum. And if you're wondering what type of little tiny rubber band fits around these, 165 on the width. 55 series sidewall, and I like the way they did the metallic gray around the fender openings. Now, one thing you'll notice is, look how far forward the wheels are pushed, both at the front and the back of this vehicle. That's really gonna open up a lot of room on the interior. Now, coming down the side, you do have the gunmetal gray on your mirror caps, LED turn singles built in, 360 degree cameras, and the two-tone is really working for me especially with this copper top color trim that we have. You got color match on the door handles, and then of course some nice body lines they put into the side and the gray along the bottom. Large openings, and I think that's one of the pluses is that when you open up the doors, you have a lot of room for both the front seat passengers, rear seat passengers, and then we come all the way to the back. Look at that long roof spoiler massive in size. I think the one thing I'm going to zonk is the wiper because with all that space, we could get that wiper out of the way. I like the way it's got the large rear glass. Nissan underneath the glass plastic cover here with your LED lighting. Zero emissions because it's all about EV with this vehicle. The Sakura badge and then just like up top, you have the nice metallic gray with some design finish. But while we go ahead, let's get into the inside and talk about charging with this Sakura. All right, guys, come on in to this 2024 Sakura. Believe it or not, I'm sure you don't know this, but this is the number one selling EV in Japan. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I'm kind of digging this small size car. I know if I go to Cars and Coffee with this, I'm going to get more attention than the Lambo, Lambo owners. How much is this? MSRP for the way that this one is optioned is right around $13,000 US. That to me, price point wise is crazy. Charging 10% to 80% in 40 minutes. That's 113 mile range. And it's got a little tiny, teeny 20 kilowatt battery pack. But let's see what else you get when you go Sakura to the door panels. You're gonna notice the use of renewable materials. The cloth up top, not my favorite because it's gonna get kind of dirty over time, but if you keep it clean, it could work, and it is soft on the armrest. What I do like is the copper taken from the outside with the stitching up top there by your window controls, and then the same thing with the 
bottom door panel, look at the way they took the design, sort of like from the bumpers, and brought it into the door panel. Door size, the pocket is decent. You could probably get four Japanese Pop-Tarts in there and maybe a small bottle of milk. You do have cloth on the dash, just like on the door panels, but the copper is what really makes this extra nice. Infotainment, nine inch, and you can see how it's all connected with the digital gauge cluster, but you're gonna have all your functions. Of course, everything is in Japanese, since this is a JDM vehicle. And then that copper, you got your power on button, the e-pedal, which is your um, single throttle operation, and then this is your electric shifter for the direct drive transmission. You got your AC controls, heated steering wheel, and heated seats. Down below, what do we have? We have a tray for some Japanese Twinkies, 12 volt, and a place for some Tootsie Rolls down there. And then of course, the seats, the cloth material, soft touch operation. I'm kind of digging this. Normally I don't like these cap, but it's nice and wide. I guess the only zonk is, is that my arm is taking it up and the passengers get none, but it is manual controls for both sides of the seats for the passenger and the driver. But you can see I'm six feet tall and it looks like, honey, I shrunk Joe Rady from Rady's Rides because there's lots of room above my head. But why don't you come over to the business end? I want to introduce you to the steering wheel in the Sakura. Right, guys, business time, right hand drive on the Sakura pedal box. You'll notice it's a little tight, especially for somebody with a size 12 like myself. But you got that one pedal operation with the throttle if you choose to use, do so. Dead pedal is just carpet, so I wish that they would have gave me a real dead pedal, but you'll notice how low the floor is. That's because the battery is in the bottom of the Sakura. Now, when it comes to the steering wheel, you do have the nice material with the copper stitching, and of course, the updated Nissan badge, flat black on all the switch gear, and then look at that digital gauge cluster. Really, really nice to have that important information that you could scroll through a cornucopia Japanese all-you-could-eat buffet of information there. And then it comes to, of course, the overall space in here. Seats feel good. I feel good. Let's get into the back seat and see what your passengers are going to experience in the Sakura. Back seat time, come on in. This really, compared to the Leaf, makes the Leaf seem like it's the micro car because there's so much room in the Sakura. Not only headroom, but legroom. You got that totally flat floor because this is a Bev. No pocket behind the passenger seat. So that is a big, a bit of a zonk. I do, or I should say the driver. I have a pocket over here, perfect for, I would say five NES games. You could get the Japanese special right down the street. Seats are comfy, no center armrests, but they maximize out the room. And the cloth interior does feel nice and soft like your favorite pillow or your favorite wubby that you had when you were six years old. But why don't we go ahead, let's get in the cargo area because I want to go for a spin in the Sakura. All right, guys, cargo room time. You're just going to hit the button. It's manual lift. The beach is that way, everybody. You're going to be given three cubic feet of space. Now, this may not sound like a lot, but it's about the room for the people. But if you don't have people in the back seat, watch this. This slides forward to give you a little bit more room. And then, of course, Look at that. Now you have plenty of space. They actually have a Costco here in Tokyo where you can get those big, large pickles that are in those single bags filled with pickle juice. Very interesting. But why don't we go ahead, let's go ahead, lock this down and go on throttle in the Sakura. All right, guys, we are inside the Sakura and it's amazing just how much room there is and how comfortable of a space it is. That, I think they really hit the nail on the head. And I can understand why this is the number one selling EV in Japan. Now, it's not about horsepower. It's not about some fast zero to 60, but it has efficiency. And that is what's important. What's great about the battery length is that being in the city, you can find charging stations. It's not like people are driving across Japan. Sitting on the right hand side of the vehicle is very unique and interesting. I'm sure you hear the doorbell dinging. That means I'm on the right path with the navigation. So when you think about it, for $13,000 to have 
your navigation, heated seats, uh, all of these great controls feels really good at that price point. The one thing it's missing is a sunroof, and that's why I chose to put the camera this way. I don't think looking out across the small little hood is gonna do you any favors. It's all about what's here right now. Here is the key fob, just like the Nissan Aria key fob. Windshield wipers work well. And it's just fascinating to be here in Tokyo and driving a right-hand drive vehicle, plus on top of that, driving a micro car, a K car. These things, when you look around and you see Nissan Leafs, or Nissan Leaves, I guess you should say, um, this is where you're like, boy, oh boy, that Nissan Leaf is large. These make sense. And it's just, I don't know, it's just cool. <laughs> just cool, fun little car to drive, I mean, Let's see what the on throttle feels like. I'm gonna slow down a little bit here. One pedal operation, not using any feet. On throttle, here we go. Sakura style. Not gonna break any land speed records, but still has plenty of oomph to get out of its own way, which is good. Suspension is nice. And what's awesome is, is with the long wheelbase, it's very stable. And I like that. Plus it maximizes all the room in here. Getting to the infotainment system well within reach, clear, crisp understanding of what's going on with the digital gauge cluster. Trying to pay attention to where I need to go here and talk at the same time on the wrong side of the road is really a challenge, but we're making it happen. This is what we do here on Rady's Rides. Going all the way around, you gotta go all the way around because if you go in that other lane, you're going into head-on traffic, which is not good. We don't want to do that. But nice, quiet. I like the way it doesn't have all this artificial noise. It sounds like a Tron mobile or something like that. But I'm telling you now, if you want a vehicle that has maximized space and a $13,000 price point, I don't know what else more you could ask for. I mean, this really does a great job, especially with getting to the AC controls. You got plenty of storage for your Tokyo Twinkies and the seats are comfy. But I'm hoping that this has been a fun overall review for you. We're gonna get back quickly and get this all wrapped up. So I will see you in a split second.